Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I wanted to show you an awesome text editor that I've discovered recently called Micro. And it is, well, Micro. It has a very small download size, it's easy to use, it's powerful, it has syntax highlighting, and a bunch of other features. So I definitely wanted to make a video to show you guys the Micro text editor, and that's exactly what I intend to do today. Before we get into that though, I do want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, which is Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes, and they include all of the popular distributions, such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and get this, also Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux cloud server provider that allows you to tell all of your friends I run Arch. Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You can use it to host a blog, set up a VPN server, a Minecraft server, or you could do what I did and set up a website for your YouTube channel because the official website for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. And Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support regardless of plan size so you can get live help from a real person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 in credit towards a new account. And I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. I really appreciate Linode's continued support of Learn Linux TV. Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and check out the micro text editor, which is really cool. I think you're going to love it. All right, so let's get right into it and check out the micro text editor. So first of all, let's open up a browser. I have Firefox right here, simple enough. And we want to go to GitHub, specifically the GitHub page for the micro editor, which, well, the URL is pretty simple. It's just micro-editor.github.io, just like that. And here we go. So right away, we can actually click this download button, and we'll do that in just a moment. But if we scroll through here, we can see some examples here we see the micro text editor with splits, basically multiple files open right there. And if we scroll through, we can see different color schemes. There's all kinds of features. And we get some of the features listed right here. It claims to be easy to use, highly customizable. It's supposed to feature syntax highlighting, multiple cursors. It has a terminal emulator, mouse support, and so on. So let's go ahead and download it. So I'll click on this download button right here. And we have several options for how to get this installed. If you want to, you could basically install the dev file here if you are using Ubuntu or equivalent. And there's other options here, but what is actually even easier is to simply run this command. Now, obviously you always want to be careful before you run a command like this, because you know, you just wanna make sure that you are not actually running something malicious. Now off camera, I've already tested this out, so I know that it works. So, you know, it's actually fine, but you know, trust but verify, especially when you are dealing with running commands that you have copied off the internet. So I will close this window. Let's open up a terminal and see if we can see this in action. And basically it's just curl and it's downloading the actual micro text editor and just piping it straight into bash. And in my case, I don't actually have curl installed. So let me make this a bit bigger here so we can actually see what we're doing. And then we will run sudo apt install curl. And that's just for Debian and Ubuntu, simple enough. And let's try that again. And there you go. It says it's been installed. And that was fast. I didn't even have to edit this part of the video and speed this up. So if it downloaded that quick, how big is this file? Well, let's find out. It's just 12 megabytes. That's it. That's all it is. And the name is Micro. And well, I guess the name fits, doesn't it? It's actually a pretty small executable there. And if we go ahead and run it with dot forward slash micro, just like that, it actually opens the micro text editor 
And right here, it's basically telling us that it's not able to use the system clipboard. I'll show you how to fix that in just a moment. But as you can see, the text editor is open on the screen. Then we can actually do control Q to exit out. And what I recommend is that we copy this executable right here, somewhere system-wide, somewhere that's protected. So we can't have any malicious software that rewrites the executable to do something it's not intended to do. So we could change the ownership by just running sudo chown, we'll do root, colon root, and then micro. And now we could see that it's owned by root. So let's go ahead and move this binary somewhere where it will be usable system-wide. So for that, I will run sudo and then mv. Let's move the micro binary that we've just downloaded into user local bin. And there's actually several locations where you can store a binary. So if you want to use something else, I'll leave it up to you. But I'm going to use user local bin because it works for me. And now we should not have that in our working directory. We do not. So if I type which and then micro, we can see that it does recognize the micro command. So now anywhere on the terminal, I can simply run micro to launch the editor. So let's go ahead and take care of this annoying red error message right here. It's just, you know, it's red, it's in my face. I want to make that go away. So again, control Q to quit out. And let's do this. Let's run sudo apt update if we haven't already done that. And then we can run sudo apt install. And then the package we want to install is xclip. And that's a very small package to install. So let's go ahead and run micro again and see if that error goes away. And it does. So now we have the micro text editor open. And I really like this editor quite a bit. I'm going to show you some basic usage right now. So first and foremost, it's a text editor. So it allows you to, well, edit text. As you can see, I can start typing immediately. Unlike Vim, I don't have to switch modes to start typing. I can just start typing. And that's pretty similar to Nano as well. But what I like about this more than Nano is that it seems like the micro editor is basically like somewhere between Nano and Vim. It may not be as advanced as Vim, but it's not as beginner focused as Nano. It's somewhere in the middle. So first of all, I just showed you how to quit. It's just control Q to save, it's control S. And that's pretty cool because control S is also the keyboard shortcut to save in pretty much all other apps nowadays. So what I could do is just call it testfile.txt or whatever I want to name it. So now that I have the file saved, I could do control Q. And sure enough, there's testfile.txt. And just like any other text editor on Linux, I could just type the name of the editor and then the file I want to open in that editor. Standard stuff here. And now that file is on my screen right here. And it also advertises syntax highlighting as well. So what I'm going to do is quit out of here. Let's open up a fresh instance of micro. And what I'm going to do is type a line of Python code. So I will type print and then Hello world, just like that. So there's no syntax highlighting yet, but what you'll notice is when you go to save it, and then if I save it in a file name that ends in .py, you can now see that syntax highlighting was just activated. It wasn't activated at first because I didn't even save it. It didn't even know what kind of file it was, but now that I've named it, with a file name extension ending in .py, it knew that this is a Python file, and then it activated syntax highlighting accordingly. Another feature that is worth pointing out is the command bar. If you do Control and then E, you'll notice at the very bottom of the screen, we have a greater than symbol and a flashing cursor. So now we are actually able to enter commands. And on the documentation page for the micro text editor, there's a list of all kinds of different things that we can do, but I'm going to give you some of the highlights. And the first thing you might want to know is, well, what are the default key combinations for how to use this? So what we can do is type help and then default keys. No space between default and keys. I'll press enter. And then we get this menu right here. If I scroll down, it gives us all of the keyboard shortcuts. So 
Anytime you want to know what keyboard shortcuts are available or even if you actually forget one, then you can open this up and find out. And there's all kinds of different keyboard shortcuts here. I can't go over them all, but I will leave it up to you to explore them all or whatever ones you want to explore. And then here I can do control Q to get out of the help mode. And that brings me back to the main file. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if I bring that back actually, I could use control W to switch between the different windows here. And the help menu at the bottom is for all intents and purposes, another instance of micro It's basically another file. And you could have more than one file opened at the same time. And then you just do control W to switch between them. So if I want to get out of the help menu at the bottom, again, control Q if that has focus, and I'm back to the first file. So back on the command bar here, again, control E, I could do help, and then I could type commands to get a list of commands that are available. And you know, same thing here, I could just scroll through this list and I could look at all of the commands here that I can use in command mode with the command bar open to do various things. Now you can ignore the backtick symbols here. We basically, for this example or any of the others, we just need to type everything in between the backticks. So basically the command starts with replace and it ends here. So to see this in action, it should allow us to replace text. I will do this again, control E, and then I will type replace all. I want to replace the word world. And I want to replace that with YouTube. And if this works, world at the top on the first line should be replaced with YouTube. I'll press enter and it happened. Now the examples shown actual quotes around the strings that are being replaced. You might need to use quotes depending on if you are utilizing special characters or not. But as you just saw, I was able to find and replace. Now another thing we can do is actually split. So what I will do in command mode here is V split and then the file name and I can just keep pressing tab and see the files that are in my home directory. If I forgot what I named it, for example. And I have the test file, so that's it right here. I'll press enter. And then it opened the test file, the first example, in a new split right there. And again, control W to switch between these. So I can actually have more than one file open at the same time in the same window. Similarly, I could do control E again. I could do H split and then enter. And I didn't give it a file name that time. So if you don't give it a file name, it's basically just a new text editor window. And now I have another window. And again, control W will switch me between the different windows that I have available. Now, another command that we can enter in the command bar at the bottom is the command to change the color scheme. So set and then color scheme. And what color scheme do we actually want to change to? Well, I don't even know what color schemes are even available. So I could just hit tab and it allows me to go through the list of the color schemes that are pre-installed. And the only way to really know what they look like is to give them a try. So I will try this one right here and press enter. And you can see the color scheme did indeed change. So again, same thing, just keep tabbing through. And just keep repeating that until you find the color scheme that you like the best. And when you do find the color scheme that you like the best, make sure that you let me know in the comments down below which one that is. So I can see what colors you guys prefer. Now I am only scratching the surface of this editor. I like it quite a bit actually. And another thing that I like about this is that it is very small. As I've mentioned, it's only about 12 megabytes, so it is very tiny. And it's very easy to install, it's just one command, but what you can also do is just download it one time. You could throw this in your version control or maybe your configuration management software and then have this deployed to all of your computers. Since there's no package to install, it's literally just a matter of grabbing this binary and just making sure that this binary is available on all of your systems. And once it is, you can go ahead and start using it. And there's a lot more features that you can use, a lot more tricks, a lot more customizations that you can make. Make sure that you check out the help pages as well as the main web page for this project to learn all the ways that you can customize it and make it your own. 
I really like this text editor quite a bit, and you know, I wonder if it can actually become my favorite. Vim is currently my go-to, but who knows? I mean, this is very well done. I just love the way that it's built. The keyboard shortcuts are very simple. It gives you all the customization that you could ever possibly want. And there's all kinds of features that you can use. So definitely check out the main page and the help pages. So what did you think of the micro text editor? Is it possibly going to replace your current text editor of choice? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And make sure you subscribe because as always, I have some awesome content coming very soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.